All right, what's going on guys? Coach Alfred here and today we're taking your forehand and bringing it up to that next level because look, wouldn't it be great if you could hit your forehand kind of like these guys? So if you're ready to transform that forehand and bring it up to the next level, sit back, buckle up, because we're jumping in right now. All right, so step number one on your journey to upgrade that forehand. Listen, if you want a great forehand, the first thing, the most foundational thing you need is a good solid coil. This is where everything starts. And I'm gonna tell you why. Listen, a good coil is kind of like a rubber band, okay? You take the rubber band, you pull it back. If you pull it back just a little bit, what do you get from it? Well, you get a little dinky thing. <laughs> it really does nothing. What if you take the same band and then you pull it back far? And then, because you're crazy, you pull it back a little bit further. When you let that go, the energy transfer goes pow! That's what a good coil does on your forehand. So we're gonna talk about the coil and then I'm gonna give you four quick checkpoints to make your coil is exactly what it needs to be. All right, so let's talk about this coil right here. Listen, when the ball starts coming to you, the first thing your brain does is it says it's a forehand. When you know it's a forehand, you are going to perform what's called the unit turn, okay? The unit turn will be you split step and then your body turns like this. Now, here's a quick hack for you. If you want a great coil, your non-dominant hand is absolutely key. This is what I want your non-dominant hand to do. When you do the unit turn, keep your hand on the throat. You should be able to look outside of this little triangle thing here, you should be looking that way through here. Let me tell you why that's so key. Because look, if my non-dominant hand stays on the racket, look at what it does. It, it pulls my shoulders over. And this is the start to a really great coil. Now, once you get to here, at the very least, that non-dominant hand should be parallel to the service line at the very least, okay? So you need to at least be here with your chin looking over your shoulder. Look at it from the side view. You're here, the non-dominant hand stays on the throat. You need to at least get to here. Now, some of the best players, I'm thinking maybe Alcaraz, Djokovic, they go even further like this. So from the front view, you're here, they turn, and they go a little bit further. And I know you know why. Because back to the rubber band thing, the further you pull it back, what do you get? You get more snapback. So Djokovic goes here, and then he has all of that pent up energy ready to unload on the tennis ball. But let's go through the checklist now, okay? Just by having your non-dominant hand Go over here, maybe a touch further, look at everything that's loaded for you. You now have four things. You have your shoulders going out here, your chest and trunk going out here. You have your hips are loaded. You have your legs loaded and coiled. You are ready to unleash all of that on the tennis ball. Before we move forward, let's take a look at some of the best players in the world and check out what their coils actually look like. All right, so step one was a strong coil. Step two, ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite part. You've worked so hard. You've gotten all of that energy loaded up, and now it's my favorite part. You unleash that tidal wave of energy on the tennis ball. But listen, it has to be done correctly. You have to do the right thing at the right time in the right way, or else it all sort of fizzles out. Look at how the uncoiling works, and this is so beautiful. Watch this, you are now set up. You are coiled up. What is gonna happen is your back foot loaded 
the ball comes in, the racket starts to drop, and the back leg loads. As soon as you are ready to fire, and this is a timing thing, your back leg transfers weight. You are now pushing against the ground, kinetic chain beauty happening here. You are going to push against the ground, and that back hip is going to come forward like this. You are now going to clear the front hip the same way you will clear your shoulders. Because look, at the same time that the back leg fires and the hip pushes forward right here, you remember that non-dominant hand? Listen, you are not just doing that to look pretty, okay? There's a purpose. When you are here and that ball's coming and that leg fires, your non-dominant hand is actually going to clear. Now, I don't mean clear as in drop, hit the ball, okay? You just now wasted all of that pent up energy. We do not want to do that. What is going to happen is you are going to clear it with purpose. You are, what I want you thinking of is pulling, okay? You are going to pull across the body. Keep the hand high, okay? Kind of like you're pulling the back shoulder forward. Back in my day, I used to mow a whole lot of yards. We didn't have the push button starters. We had to get down and go vroom, vroom, and it took like 15 times to do. It built muscle, but it was frustrating. I want you thinking that same thought. When you have that non-dominant hand out, I actually want you pulling, pulling your body to rotate through and clearing this shoulder because at the point of contact, if you study the best hitters, that back shoulder should actually be in front of this shoulder. The way that happens is we have to clear the hips. We have to clear the core. We have to clear this shoulder. One of the major ways to do that is the non-dominant hand. So let's go through the whole thing. Watch what happens. Okay, look, you are set up. You are coiled up, everything's ready. The ball comes in, I drop the racket, I go down, I fire. Hmm. At the same time I fire, I pull. Everything's working now. My shoulders are clearing. My back hip comes through the ball. You know why the pros, <laughs> they look like they're just out there swinging like this and the ball's going a thousand miles an hour. Have you ever wondered why that is? The reason is, not at all because they have one arm that's so super strong they just pound the ball. The truth is they use hundreds of muscles in every shot. You know the old saying, many hands makes work light? Listen, many muscles make shot hard, okay? Many muscles make shot powerful. We are trying to, in the uncoiling process, bring in as many muscles as possible to channel energy into the ball. If you watch this closely, right here, boom, you actually have now, your calves are working, your quads, your hams, your glutes, your core, your shoulders, your traps, your back, all of these muscles are now getting funneled into that one point, which is the tennis ball. Did you notice the one part of the body I didn't really mention? The hitting arm. I didn't even talk about the racket. Because look, the rest of the story is after everything fires and only after everything fires, then the arm and the pec get involved. What I mean by that is this, after you push down and the leg fires and the hip fires and the arm clears and the shoulders clear and the core, all of that energy like wave after wave after wave is crashing through, what happens is the hand gets yanked forward. When the hand gets yanked forward, you have this thing called lag. The butt of the racket faces out. You can't force this. The only way to make it happen is to be nice and loose. So the best tennis players, they're just so loose. They explode and the racket lags here and the head flips. And now you've turned the racket into a whip to add into all of that energy going towards the tennis ball. That's what makes the coiling 
and the uncoiling so foundational for a good shot. But look, let's check out some of the greatest players once again and see how they do it. All right, let's take a look at one of the greatest forehands in the game here. Nadal is pretty much fully loaded here. Notice he starts to drop that racket at the same time as his back leg loads. And then you can see from his hips, there's a transfer of weight happening right here. Notice the non-dominant hand. As the weight starts to transfer forward, he then pulls across his body. He is using that right hand to pull across the body and open those shoulders up so that at the point of contact, the shoulders are open, the trunk is open, and notice the hips. Once he pushed off the ground, he started to use that back hip to rotate forward to add in more power into the shot. So from here, you now have leg power happening. You have from the non-dominant hand, the back is firing. You have, have the trunk firing, everything's going forward. And then he also adds in the pec and the arm muscles, the hitting arm muscles into the shot, which produces this beautiful lag right here. The lag is there, and then the racket kind of acts as a whip, and it gets thrown into the shot. The contact point happens in front of the body. The hitting shoulder clears, everything's facing forward, and then all of that comes together to produce a nice long follow through. All right, guys, so listen, in step number one, we talked about having that nice, strong coil right here. Step number two, we talked about unleashing, uncoiling in the right way. Step number three, I want to change the way you view hitting the ball. Rather than swinging at the ball or swinging to the ball, tip number three, I want you swinging through the ball. Okay, a lot of players, their swings, Although they want to hit the ball hard, their swings just kind of get weak. They play timid, they kind of hold back, and the swing speed actually slows down. When you do that, you lose power, you lose spin, which means you lose control. So rather than swinging to the ball, I actually want you thinking swinging through the ball. And on top of that, I want you accelerating through the shot. So don't slow down you go through the shot. It's a little bit like when I was young and I took Taekwondo. And then in some of the tests, you had to break boards. Most of them were really, really small, thin, thin boards. But some people were breaking bricks and you know, that's just crazy. But what they taught me was, you don't punch to the board, you punch through the board. I want you thinking the same thing. Don't swing to the ball, swing through the shot and even accelerate through the shot. One drill you might try, it's a little bit crazy, but hear me out. I love having my students actually throw tennis rackets. Yes, you heard me correctly. I will give them an old racket because you don't wanna toss a brand new racket that costs 230 bucks, because that's crazy. Give them an old racket, take them out to a field where it's nice and safe, have them swing a forehand and then tell them now throw it. The same swing path, but once you get here, throw the racket. <laughs> what you'll find is in almost every case, people know how to throw and they know how loose. So throwing the racket does three things. One is it forces that wrist to be nice and loose. So people who are stiff right here, and so they lose that lag, if they're throwing, they know that they gotta be really loose with it, wham. Number two, it teaches them to accelerate through the ball because every time we throw, we go faster through the release point. Same thing here, loose through the contact point. And then as uh, just an added bonus, on the follow through, it actually cuts out all of this stuff here, you know, kind of salute follow throughs. Because they're accelerating, they're out of control in a good way, which means 
they have to go nice and long, a beautiful long follow through. Now, they can stop it here, they can stop it here or here, but the point is, is that when they're throwing it, they're swinging through and it gets them nice and long out here. So it kind of fixes three things in one. It's a really good thing to try. If you're feeling crazy, go out and chunk some tennis rackets. I guarantee you, it'll help your game. All right, guys, we did it. We walked through three steps that are guaranteed to level that forehand up. Step number one, we talked about a beautiful, a strong coil. Step number two, we talked about the right way to uncoil using all of those muscles, all of that energy getting put into the shot. And then for tip number three, we talked about swinging through the ball, not just to the ball. All right, guys. Hey, look, we made it through. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helps you, be sure to hit that like button and or subscribe because we have a lot more videos coming out soon. But other than that, thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you on court soon.